All right, so we're here in the Jody Jazz factory in the back. And so right over here, we're looking at these rods. So Jody, if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on over here. All right, we start over here on the factory tour because this is how we start. As opposed to molded mouthpieces, they uh, come out of the mold quite crude. And there's so much different operations to do that adds to the variability of molded mouthpieces. What we're doing by taking bar stock is we're making our exact blank and then we're on the lathe and then we're putting it on the mill and making the mouthpiece 85 to almost 90% done, then we're doing our handwork. So here we have bar stock, we have two different kinds of hard rubber, our regular German rubber and then we have our shed bill rubber which is that softer formula. We have a polycarbonate for the jet, we have um, our brass, and we have aluminum for our giant. We hard anodize that aluminum, and it makes the material next to diamonds and hardness. It's a very hard material, and that's something special about the giant. Um, so I'm going to take you over to the lathe now. We have two lathes and three mills. These are CNC machines. Our mills are five-axis machines. Um, so we take that bar and we put it in the machine. Um, looks like we're making uh, uh, DV blanks here. Um, they can see them. The part gets cut off and it goes into a little box right here. It's hard to see in there. I don't think you're going to be able to see much. But it turns it and uh, it comes out like this. It has the bore and the basic outside shape. And then we take it over to the mill. So looks like we're making uh, base clarinet mouthpieces over here. This is a blank. It has the basic bore and the outside shape. And we're going to walk around here to the mill. So in this operation we're working on the beak and some of the outside body we're going very fast but when we do the facing curve the table and the facing curve will be barely moving the slower you go the more accurate uh, you are so on a non-playing part of the mouthpiece we can go kind of fast um, but we make up for that when we go super slow and that sound is is the machine it makes its own kind of music. I know. I've been hearing that all day. Yeah. And I, was gonna, I thought someone was play testing something, and yeah. I didn't realize that it's the machine. Each mouthpiece <laughs> has its own song. Um, and we go over here to the handwork now. And these guys are experts on metal. Sebastian is working on uh, uh, Jody Jazz HR Star. It's probably our most popular mouthpiece. It's hard to see this. But this is unfinished. Um, that mouthpiece would kind of play, but when we when Sebastian finishes, uh, this is what it's going to look like. And he has, I'm going to put them side by side. He has made that baffle work into that tip rail. He's made that tip rail by taking material away, and he can do this better than the machine can. And the mouthpiece truly sings at this point. Um, so, and you notice it's about 25 thousandths of an inch thickness of the tip rail. And it's perfectly symmetrical. It's very hard to do because you can see what, what Sebastian is doing over here. He's taking any burrs off the inside rails. Um, and he, if he touched the playing part of the rail, that would mess up the mouthpiece. But he's going to use his file to smooth out the beak. The beak is going to get sanded later, as is the mouthpiece. And now he's going to go in and start making that baffle and the tip rail. And the dust goes on to the tip rail, the part you're trying to see. The, the dust gets there, so it makes it difficult. And it's very precise movements. And as, after he gets done with the file, he's going to take that cardboard with sandpaper on it have the file there and push the sandpaper on there and smooth it out finish that tip rail
So this morning, everybody was working on metal, and Andrew is still on metal. We can look at that. So we're working on super jets here, and uh, he's done his work inside now. Andrew, do you have a piece that's uh, before filing? All right. Well, here's an Alto super jet before filing. It'll play like this, but it won't sing. You have, and this one is after. Let's see if I can. And then we're going to take this, this facing curve is good already, but we're going to take it on sandpaper and trace the table and then the curve like that. And it's just going to make it that much better. And you can ruin the mouthpiece in any of these operations. So No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not to jinx you. Um, well, Andrew's over here on the metal table. That's the, that's the elite guys. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what's happening in here. This is our portable buffing room. That's Jimi Hendrix, and uh, he's buffing DVs. Um, and the noise you hear is the, uh, the dust collector. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, and you'll be seeing later. Jimmy is our tuba player. and uh, Was this the buffing you were talking about before in one of the tours where it, it can get really hot? Yeah. Um, and that's the part. So he's holding that in his bare hands and it does get hot. But he's got better control than if he had it in a glove. And I guess over time, you know, like a guitar player, player gets calluses, right? I guess over time he gets accustomed to, or a cook with the heat. He gets yeah, accustomed yeah. to the heat. It's the buffing is the dirtiest job we have. Wow. Um, and that's why he's contained in that room. What's that? Is that why he's contained in the room? Yeah, because we're trying to keep that dust, and it's going up in the dust collector up there. And uh, he's got his, uh, his respirator on. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, so this is our, our new lathe. And uh, we can see what it's doing. Uh, I'm trying to tell what he's making right now. That's singing. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see in there. I don't think so. Yeah, it's hard to tell. The The liquid in here is called coolant. I was wondering. I was and, going to uh, ask you about that. It's got kind of a, a silkiness that keeps the, uh, the part cool from getting hot when it's drilling. And it blows away some of the chips and stuff. So we got cleaner machining. And it, it, everything is fed into the computer over here in terms of like dimensions yeah. and stuff like that. These are the G code, which is, it's like in MIDI music, everything comes down to a number, uh, like volume and how hard you tack the note and the actual pitch of the note. And so these moves that the machine can make can all come down to numbers. And we start in a 3D model in a program called SolidWorks. And it, you can see the 3D model and you can adjust it and draw it and do all the dimensions. And then when we have, we make what we have, we put that into another program. That's called CAD, Computer Assisted Drawing. Then okay. we put it in a CAM program, Computer Assisted Machining. And that drawing spits out the numbers. The CAM program spits out the numbers that this needs to go. What tool, where, how fast, all of that. Wow, okay. And I remember you saying how you know, certain aspects have to go super, super, super slow. Yeah, that's, and that's that most important aspect of the face and curve of the table. Right. Um, here's our other buffing room. Hey, Shweta, how you doing? 
All right. Um, so this is, you know, we, we get a very good finish from our machine, but we want a better finish. And so with several grades of sandpaper, Shweta is, is doing the, the outer body, the beak, um, and making it just really silky, nice, and smooth. Is there a certain number of times that she, she does this, or does she just feel it and, and knows? I think everybody could be different. She's going to feel it um, because it depends on how much pressure you're putting. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and this is our buffing wheel in here. and We've got extra light. We just want to really see everything. We have the dust collector is up on top of here as well. Um, dust actually gets collected while it's here and goes into these tubes and out. Um, so this is the probably the cleanest buffing room you'll ever see. If you yeah, go wow. into a lot of places, the buffing room is just going to be caked in, in dust. Wow. Um, okay. Leonard, what are you making? Uh, these are uh, HR tenor blanks uh, for HR mouthpieces. Uh, I'm just measuring it out to make sure that it's measured, it's cutting them out proper. Yeah. And uh, this is something, my prior machinists, they weren't coming from the, the music industry, and they weren't used to measuring every part, every piece off the machine. We just have started doing that because that's what we need, and this way we don't have any surprises. Material can change a little bit, like the density of it. Um, so sometimes you might get a batch that's just a little softer or just a little harder, and that changes how the dimensions come out, or a tool can start to wear, um, or, you know, we're just always, and he's checking carefully that every, every blank, this is just the blank, um, not even the, the playing part of the mouthpiece yet. So we want to make sure it fits on your neck right, that the outer dimension is right, so when we cut that curve that table it's all good um, and he's seeing if it's concentric if it's round all the way so how often do you got to kick one out oh. not often every I test it like every every time a bar goes in I test that one then I go through all of them maybe like one every like two three to five rods but we make adjustments along the way, so it's never terrible off. So I don't have to throw away many. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Okay. Cool. This is so interesting. No machine shop is going to try every part. All right. Is this that jet project? Yeah. Um, it's looking pretty straight to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's better than it was, but I'm still working on it. All right. Well, it's we're always, you know, working on stuff, making adjustments. We're not taking just sitting back on our laurels, you know. Um, just trying to do the correct thing. I feel like a guy that used to be a consumer, right? And I got into the Wonka factory and, and I can make the chocolate like I want, um, like I think it should be. You know, I feel like way in the old days, there was a certain, not contempt for the consumer, but um, but I don't know. They, they would say, well, People, some people like a real flea blowing and some people like resistance. So we can put them all out. They can pick the one they want. But that's not true. If you try a model and you want that model, you want it the best one they ever made. Yeah, yeah. And so kind of that's, that's our philosophy. I could tell too all day, you yeah. know, all day, all the stuff we're talking about. And now oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Kristen's the uh, super expert at all this. Um, and... Uh, just doing this gold paint, and then you you wipe it off with acetone, and it makes a nice engraving. Um, this is the new DVHR 
that are kind of flying off the shelf. Yeah. That, that it's uh, the best release we've had as far as people learning about it and stores making orders without us doing much. Um, uh, so Robbie is working in there uh, with the magnifying glass on his filing. Um, and we all have those here. He's got his over there. Um, so, and I've found other factories that don't use that. And in, even in this first place, the light above is not as good. So we have good light above, and then we have the extra light and the magnifying glass. And it just helps us stay uh, really symmetrical on that tip rail. And also consistent, I would think. Um, so we, we have, you know, I said uh, three mills. The mill is the one that drills down. This one is an exact copy of, of the other big one in there. Um, and then this is a, our first mill. This, it's just the same, but it's only got two stations on it. When we can, this has four. So we can put four. In this case, we probably have four of the same mouthpiece and just goes and does each operation. Uh, so it's a little more efficient than having to set up on one thing. We could have it doing four different mouthpieces. We have that ability, but the way it works, we usually just have a whole tray of blanks and we're working on HR star 6Ms. It's our most popular mouthpiece. Um, so looks like, I don't know what this machine is doing. Let's see. Uh, from here, I can't tell. Might be a, a tenor. Uh, oh, it's a baritone. HR star baritone. Um, so that's what it looks like off the machine. It's pretty close to being done. But we're still going to work that tip rail. We're going to work the baffle. And we're going to trace that facing curve and draw out that chip rail a little bit more. And that's a really fine operation that's got to be just right. Um, Candy is working on HR stars, I think. Looks like this afternoon everybody switched over to HR star. Um, and uh, this is our pad print machine that uh, on the jet is the only one mouthpiece that we put a pad print, a print on it. We engrave everything else with the uh, CNC machines. Um, but uh, it's, this is kind of finicky. You have to mix ink. You have to have it just right. And uh, the pressure that the pad comes, the pad goes down. There's a, a plate that has the, uh, the logo on it. The pad comes down in the ink and gets that ink on it and comes and puts the mouthpiece. You put a mouthpiece here and it comes and presses down on it. Um, so um, in the back, we have uh, behind the building, we have two big compressors, this big each, and they pump air to the machines whenever you hear that air a tool is changing and it changes it with air pressure so a lot, lots of uh, as you said lots of songs in here yeah songs air songs mouthpiece songs um, so basically you know even from my showroom I can hear and uh, once in a while something happens I can run back and <laughs> everybody's got ears in there so they're listening. Um, we're about to start our band rehearsal. So uh, the Jody Jazz Band, I hear everybody warming up. So I'm going to jump in there, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. This picture uh, was drawn in, in Indonesia where I had done a clinic and then all the kids came to like this restaurant afterward. 
and they were going to play, and I was going to sit in with them. And there was this artist there, and he said, I'm going to paint your picture. And uh, he looked at me, and he looked at me playing, and he studied me. And then he put a blindfold on him, himself, and he put a black bag over his head, and then he proceeded to do this. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He signed it and everything. It's so cool. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Lots of storage. Um, so this is Zach's office. Hello. Uh, engineer. Um, and uh, just showing you guys, you do whatever you want. If you want yeah. To talk to What's really cool, actually, it's, it's really quiet up here because we just went through the, um, we went through, oh, I didn't realize you guys had a jazz festival in Savannah, too. We do. That's cool. And you're about to meet the board president. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's very quiet up, up here, too. Uh, wow. This is Colin Schofield. Colin, this is hey. Donna Schwartz. Hey. Nice Donna. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Yeah. And uh, Colin's got this, those symbols. That's from Elvin, right? Uh, um, you got one from uh, That was um, from his uh, 75th birthday party. I mean, that, that's just from the Zildjian family here. Uh, you know, when I left. So, wow. Oh, it was with Zildjian for 20 years. Oh, okay. Okay. And then that's the, hence the hand, the hand hammered, right? You, yes. You got it. Yeah, got He's it. He's got, he had awesome. the idea. And, oh, wow. And I was on the board of the Savannah Jazz Festival, but I got off and Colin took my place and now he's president. Awesome. Uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. We have our biggest festival ever. This really? Year. Yeah. How many years off for COVID? Well, we we actually uh, live streamed for, for for two years. Smart, that's good. So they they, they still still had a festival uh, last year was uh, 2022 was we got back live in the you know in the park and in the venues, but um, for 2020 20 and 21 they were live streamed events. So you know we got a lot of viewers online. We, partnered with uh, one of the local TV stations and they were live streaming it and we had we had over a hundred thousand people viewing it from around the world. See so, you know, what people uh, don't realize too so uh, by me in Los Angeles there's the big potato and they were smart they sure. live streamed their shows yeah I wish they would continue because the thing is that people all over the world were watching these shows and they had access to great musicians that they normally couldn't have access to you know so yeah. one good thing from COVID is that you know, great music was able to spread, yeah. you know, to places that normally wouldn't. Yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for a year. I pretty much lived, in, I was not not far from the baked potato. Got it. Used to live there. And, and then back then, it was, you know, you had incredible, all the studio musicians would come out and play. It's not, not quite what it used to be back then in the 80s, but yeah. a great place. You know, a lot of history in, in those walls. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. It was yeah. great meeting you. We always sponsor at least one group uh, for the festival. Yeah, we have We've had a lot of people. Frank Catalano this year. Yeah, that's cool. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Do you know the Hunter Tones? No, I don't. They're a really good group. Kind of check them out. Like, like kind of like Snarky Puppy in that zone, but they got their own thing. They're so cool. Um, and we had Jasmine and Jen. Uh, you know Jasmine? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had her on the podcast, yeah. I was also at the, at the jam. I was on stage with her. Oh, yeah. Many and, years ago. And yeah. Brian Miller came down yeah, he's, a couple yeah. times. He's a couple times, yeah. 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 So we, we had a lot of artists. Uh, yeah. Don Braden, a couple times. Tom Scott was here one time. Uh, so it's, uh, it's free. The whole festival is free. Oh, wow. It's a week of, of music. We're actually, all the, the shows that are not in the park are, are, are going to have a, a nominal entry fee now. Because the, the amount of funding that we get from the city is half of what it used to be. And okay. the costs of running the festival are, are double. Sure. It's a so, non-profit. Yeah, so oh, it's a okay. non-profit. So the, the free festival Friday and Saturday in Forsyth Park is still free. It's completely open to the public. But there we're having a blues night and a Latin dance night and uh, Ranky Tanky, who are well known. They've won several Grammy Awards. They're sort of a fusion of the traditional Gullah music from the area 
you know, uh, fused with jazz. They've won several Grammy Awards. Oh. They're headlining one of the shows at the Lucas Theatre. Oh, good. That's, uh, really when good. is the you know. When is the festival this year? So it's the uh, first night of the festival is September the 18th. And got we've it. got um, a screening. They, we usually have a movie night. So this year we have, uh, we're doing a screening of the Miles Davis Birth of the Cool. And uh, the director, Stanley Nelson, is coming in, and also Miles' nephew, Vince Wilburn, and his son, er uh, Erin, are, are all coming in for it. There's going to be a panel discussion Q&A after the, after the movie on the Monday night. Oh, that's really cool. So, yeah. That's really cool. So it's, uh, it's a big deal. A lot, a lot going on this, uh, this year's festival. Awesome. That's cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Nice that's to meet you. Hello. Hi. Deanna. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. you. <laughs> and you haven't really met John yet, but Deanna no. came in to help John, and she's yeah. fast grown, you know, just rock solid part of the company. Um, she's doing accounting mostly. Oh, okay. Yes. But <laughs> she needs the quiet space. <laughs> she took an initiative, and, and the, the way that's nice and orderly, that whole thing, that's her doing. Ah. It's not just me, it was a lot of people yeah. who were doing this. We did it together. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's exactly how an athlete would say it. Well, I'm just part of the team and it's a team effort. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, that's cool. And just and being orderly, yeah, that's for sure. Tyler shares this office too. So that's what's happening up here.